record at the bottom, right? Or wherever it is, it's going. Yeah, faces are appearing. And you want to mute everybody, right? <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Yeah. So, welcome uh, to any of you who are new for this and uh, Welcome back to those of you who were here the last time. Um, this is, um, really, so much is going on that it's just a wonderful thing to be able to get together with like-minded people seeking, uh, as I call it in the title, stay sane, not be crazy, uh, try to return from our reactive mind. So, I don't know how many of you got my note and remembered to bring a candle, but if you did, I'm going to light a candle here now. You might want to do that with me. And uh, we do this for a lot of reasons. Uh, and it helps remind us of uh, the, all the elements, how important the elements are outside and inside. So I'm, I'm going to do a little talking, but it's a, really a, an invocation, really a, a prayer, a meditation uh, to help us tune in to the elements of life, elements of the world, elements that are inside us. And so the fire the fire in the candle, the fire that warms us, the fire that is our passion to, to do what we want to do in the world, to make the world a better place, the fire that's a motivation that motivates us, that moves us, we call on that. And the fire that's outside us, the fires that we sit by as the temperatures get colder and um, that warm us from the outside, the fire of the sun. And so we honor that element. And we know that fire doesn't uh, burn without air. And we honor the air element, the breath that we take in. And, and you might want to just pay attention to your breath right now. Feel the air that is the same air, the ocean the, of this atmosphere that is part of Mother Earth. That you breathe in and that you breathe out, that you can feel in your nose, you can feel it as your lungs expand and contract. The fire in the air. And air is... Uh, recognized in, in many of the spiritual traditions, cultures having to do with mind. And we know that the mind can get clouded and polluted and confused. The mind can also be very clear. And we seek to bring about that kind of clarity in our work in the world as we try to change as best we can things for the better. We want to do it with a clear mind. And I don't know if you brought with you a, a stone or a, something from the earth. I mentioned it in one of the emails. I brought this little stone from just outside my house. I want to encourage you to, to just hold it. And even if you didn't bring something, maybe pick up something from your desk because it's all from the earth. Even the computer is from the earth. Our bodies are from the earth. The earth element that gives us a foundation, what we stand on. Our bones, our flesh. 
the sensory, sensual quality of life as part of the earth element, the teachings of the earth element. And the earth element can, uh, can hurt us too. You can be under an avalanche or a rock and hit you on the head. Uh, so all of these elements, we, we seek to be in right relationship with them. Fire can burn us. Air can blow us over. And so in right relationship, we have that support. And we tune in to the earth element within ourselves, within our own nature. And of course there's water. I brought a, a glass of water. Maybe some of you have something there to drink, a cup of tea, water. If the fire gets too big, we need water to help us there too. But water, the water element, as we invoke it, is our blood. And it's also the element that, that teaches us about uh, flow. And when we move in flow, when we move in the flow of life, like the Tao says, we're okay. Water also, again, in the various cultural, spiritual traditions, is thought to represent the emotions or feelings. Um, so we know uh, that at this time, perhaps more than at many times that we've been alive, uh, the emotions are being triggered. Reactive emotions, heavy emotions, difficult emotions are being triggered. And it's part of this work and it's part of all of our job to recognize that, to know what feelings we're actually having, no matter what the situation is, be honest about them. We feel anger, if we feel sad, if we feel guilt, if we feel shame, it's okay. Those things get triggered in us, we're human. But we also know that we can call on the clear water of spirit from within that can help clear our emotional nature and open us back, bring us back to balance, bring us back to the flow of the Tao. So I honor the four elements and this is just one way that I offer you as a practice that you can do uh, on your own on a daily basis, just pay attention to open your mind, open your heart, open your, your senses to the elements contemplate them, meditate on them, be with them in nature, and be with them inside yourself. So I wanted to offer now a, uh, a kind of a perspective on what's happening that I think can be uh, helpful to us. I know it's helpful to me to just begin to think about what it is that we're going through collectively in a different way than we, we ordinarily tend to think about it. Um, I think the ordinary sense, and it's not a completely false way, a paradigm or a way of thinking, is that we have good and we have bad and, and these things are fighting each other just like they always have. And, and we're basically the good guys and there's a lot of truth in that. We, we want justice, we want peace, we want harmony with the earth. And there are forces that are really essentially seem to be motivated by um, greed and uh, for more wealth, for more power, prejudice. And that battle is, is going on, no question about it. It's the same battle that Tolkien story and Star Wars story talks about. Um, but there's, there's another way of looking at this, and that is that what's happening is humanity itself, collectively, is going through a shift in consciousness, a kind of waking up. 
and it's been defined in many different ways. But one way that I uh, like to think about it is that we're waking up to a larger awareness of that which we are related to and that which we are responsible to. Where we've always been aware that we have to take care of ourselves and our family. Some people feel their responsibilities to their, their local community, their nation. It's apparent now that there's a need to wake up to the awareness that we're one large family that it encircles the whole world. And that family is not only human. That family of living beings includes all of nature, all of the aspects of nature, the animals, the, the plants, the fungi, and indigenous people would include in that even what we call inorganic beings, the stone people, the mountains, the rivers, the, um, the, the streams and the hills and uh, all of that. These, these things that we hold are energy, they're alive and they're part of an even larger being we call Mother Earth or Gaia. Now, while many people embrace, have begun to embrace, and say many people, a, a good number of people are, are hearing this idea, the waking up to Gaia, and that Mother Earth is alive, and we need to be in a caring relationship with her. But it takes really a, a lot of attention and intention to sustain an awareness that includes that in our lives as we move about, as we make decisions, as we decide what we're gonna throw in the trash, what we're gonna buy, what we're gonna, where we're gonna go, how we're gonna get there. To sustain the awareness that we are just one part, we as what we call an individual self is one part of a human family of all the parts of the world and a part of the family that includes all of the life that's on the earth at all the different levels. So that shift in consciousness, I want to invite you to make it an intention to explore. If it seems real to you and if it seems like that's something that actually you sort of already believe then make it an intention to embody that and that we do that through practices of of meditation and i'm going to get into one in a little while a, a particular practice that i think it will be helpful and uh, I mentioned uh, the word intention a, a couple of times, so I want to just remind you of um, this. Uh, um, 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 no, no. Okay, no. Now oh, well, I'm trying to find my um, little picture that I had. It's somewhere on this screen. Well, I guess I can't do it. But uh, let me go back to to uh, to you guys. Where are you? I'll get this better. Stop sharing. Okay. Now I have you. Um, basically, it was a, a a little picture that I drew that says intention with an arrow intention to attention. So when we have an intention to cultivate an attitude uh, or a, a feeling or an understanding of what is our relationship to this larger awakening that's taking place, then we put our attention on that. And as we put our attention on that direction, we start to experience a shift in our awareness. 
And that's the that's the, the the model that I was trying to I began talking about. That what's happening right now is that this awakening is happening in people, even if they're not aware of it, even if they're not conscious of it. And what happens when when person is being pushed from inside to break through old models of thinking, old ways of being, is it's painful. And people are reacting to that pain. So if this is starting to make sense to you, not, nod your head, because I can see your faces. So, so it's, it's, it's painful at times to wake up. It's as if uh, uh, you're, you're sitting on your leg for a long time, or you're arm, leaning on your arm for a long time, and the circulation is cut off, and it's fine. You, know, you don't feel any pain. Then you get up, and what happens is it starts to wake up, and it uh, feels really, really awful. So um, people react to that kind of pain. And a lot of the pushback to the shifts that we're, we're, we, as maybe progressives, you could say, are, are seeking to make in terms of policy, in terms of politics, in terms of education, in terms of healthcare, um, they, they react, or even in terms of uh, blending different racial uh, groups and peoples from different parts of the planet coming together, people are freaking out because they're, they're being pushed to wake up to a bigger sense of themselves. The reason I like that way of thinking about it rather than the, the good guys and bad guys model is it allows me to have empathy. It actually brings me into a state of empathy to um, the people that I sometimes think of as the enemy. I realize that it's, it's pain and fear that is behind their reactivity. And I have that pain and fear too, when I'm pushed to expand beyond the boundary that I've become familiar with and accustomed to and comfortable in. So I just want to offer that to you and, and uh, suggest you think about it and uh, uh, look at our, our world situation perhaps in that way. Um, a, a, uh, a panel that I recently participated in with a couple of really wonderful people who I'd never met before, uh, and I'll, I'll send the link. You know we have this chat room, but I don't want to busy you with sending you things right now in the chat room. I'll, I'll send after this some of the resources that I refer to. But uh, this, this one woman, an African-American woman, uh, just want to look again at the name, Sister Sharifa Vernice Maytong, uh, said that in preparing for this panel, the panel was about um, how can we relate What's, what are our thoughts on relating spiritually and politically to the upcoming election? Okay, so I was asked to be on this panel along with a couple of other people. And this woman said that, well, she really meditated and did rituals. And uh, she asked, what, what is it I, I really need to share? And she said that what, what she needed to share was that what we need to be doing is bringing about a whirlwind of goodwill. A whirlwind of goodwill. And I love that phrase. Uh, first of all, of course, I realize that I have to be experiencing goodwill to be part of moving a whirlwind and bringing about a whirlwind of goodwill. You, you can't make goodwill happen if that's your intention. By, by being in ill will, by being angry, right? It doesn't work. The, you, our consciousness needs to be that which we're seeking to bring into the world. And that's a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge. And I honor you, all of you for being here because I know in, in your own way, that's what you're, you're seeking. Many people have expressed to me that they struggle with uh, not hating, not hating. 
And uh, I myself have, I think I've shared this the last time, I've, I've experienced hate, I, I understand. And yet it's possible with the intention to shift our consciousness towards goodwill and even expressing that outwardly so that we're creating in this world a whirlwind of goodwill, a whirlwind that seems to imply a kind of force that will blow through a lot of the pollution in the psychic atmosphere and, and help bring about a clearing. Um, again, regarding that shift, that planetary shift in consciousness, which I, I do believe is happening, one of the great visionaries who um, uh, spoke about this and, and wrote about this brilliantly, and some of you may be familiar with Thomas Berry. How many of you know of Thomas Berry or have read any of Thomas Berry? Okay, a few, maybe a few of you. Uh, let me just read one, one quote from him that maybe will motivate you to, to look further into him. There's a lot of stuff online about Thomas Berry. He says, our challenge is to create a new language, even a new sense of what it is to be human. It is to transcend not only national limitations, but even our species isolation, to enter into the larger community of living species. This will bring about a completely new sense of reality and value, a new sense of reality. And that's that shift that I'm talking about. It's, it's actually a change in the state of consciousness from which we think of what, what is real and what's not real. Um, another a sort of a disciple or a student, a student of Thomas Berry, uh, Brian Swim, he uh, elaborates uh, on this and he was asked the question, what's the solution? In other words, what's the solution to these dilemmas of, the troubles that we're in right now. The Irish talk about the troubles. Well, we, we are in that now. They were, they were talking about the warring that was going on between the Protestants and the Catholics. Well, here we are in the troubles of the world. And Brian Swim says, the solution, it would be to reinvent ourselves at the species level in a way that enables us to live with mutually enhancing relationships. Mutually enhancing relationships, not just with humans, but with all beings, so that our activities actually enhance the world. And, and so again, I think that's the shift that we're talking about. Joanna Macy uh, talks about it as the great turning. Uh, many of the uh, wonderful teachers that are, are available to us now online and uh, are, are speaking about a, a paradigm shift, a, way, a shift in the way that we think about what's real and who we are and what we're here to do. And that that kind of waking up is, is one way to look at what's happening to us, to ourselves, and the pain that's caused in people who are caught in the resistance to that and their reactivity. So I just want to remind you again to uh, give some time, meditative time, contemplative time, uh, to looking at your intentions, your intention for one, of all the things that are going on in the world and this major global shift that's happening that, uh, to all of us, what is it that's your intention to focus on? Where you wanna then put your attention and let your attention guide your action, okay? Which, which will determine what your experience will be. Also, equally, and you can go back and forth on this, uh, what is your intention for yourself? What qualities, attributes, uh, ways of being do you want to let go of? 
What old habits are you seeking to let go of? And what is it that you're seeking to bring in to your, your uh, sense of yourself and your, what you're embodying right now in this world? So I want to just remind you to do that. Uh, write it, keep write it in journals, bring it into your meditation, ask yourself during any given moment that you wake up to the question, uh, how is what I'm doing right now related to these core intentions of what I'm seeking to develop inside myself and what it is that I'm seeking to bring uh, about as change in the world? So um, there's always going to be resistance. That's, that's just part of the journey. And we're, we're, we need, there's going to be resistance to what we try to do outwardly. And there's going to be resistance inside us to doing it. And there's resistance also to going to those kinds of places, like the place of goodwill. How many of you have experienced being so pissed off, really, so angry at what you're re seeing in the papers, what you're seeing coming out of Washington, what you're seeing coming out of the White House, that you just don't want to feel anything but anger. The anger has its own way of holding you. Any hands on that one? Yeah, and my hands is definitely up. Um, there's a, there's a gravity, a, a magnetic force to states of consciousness. And when they're familiar to us, they, they, they pull us in. And so it, it takes uh, intention. And sometimes, to, for me at least, it takes prayer. Because I realize that there's nothing in here that's going to get me out of that mindset. I have to, I, I have to, I do ask and open to something that I believe is transcendent uh, to this being that you see here, this, this person that you see here, and allows me to surrender that energy that is toxic in myself. Um, so I want to offer to you a, 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 um, a meditation and then after we do the meditation we'll we'll have some time in a in a small group small groups and uh, oh, okay now I'm going to do the screen share thing and I think I can make it work um, here here we go you see that uh, this you all see that? A, a few people that I see? Yeah. Okay, so this is just a, a diagram of three chambers within the body that you could call three kinds of mind, three aspects of consciousness that are part of each of us. Um, this uh, lower chamber here, I call them chambers. Uh, they're spaces, you could say rooms, places in consciousness, but they're located within and around the body, the body itself. So this one we call the cauldron is an area of, the, of consciousness that uh, connects very much to the moving, generating force of life. It's uh, related to sexuality, but it's, it's much bigger than that. It's much more inclusive of all of the forces that bring about new life. And that, uh, but it's also what we call our gut intelligence, our visceral intelligence. When we say I have a gut feeling about something, um, you could say that's, that's literally what's happening here. You live here as well as other places, but part of us is always operating here, even though this tends to be the area that we have the least 
uh, conscious awareness of in terms of what's going on. But when you get a bellyache, uh, and often the bellyache comes from stress or from uh, emotional question, you know, difficulties that we're going through, uh, this is the place that calls your attention. Okay. Um, now this this one. Can you also see where I'm pointing the cursor? Does that show up on your screen? Yeah. So the heart the heart one. Uh, which we can call the heart chamber, uh, sometimes referred to as the cave of the heart. Uh, that's more your emotional consciousness, where all of the basic human relationship emotions uh, reside. And uh, it's also a powerful, powerful place of healing. My phone started talking for some reason. Um, so uh, this is the heart chamber. Um, this, of course, is our, the head. And the head is not only the area, and the area around it, is not only the area where thinking mind exists, but a, a bigger kind of knowing awareness can be present. Um, so. One way of thinking about it is it's head, heart, gut. Uh, and what I love about this uh, is that it's, it's, it's literal. It's literal. You can, uh, through meditation practices, uh, focus your awareness in each of these areas and recognize the sense of reactivity to whatever it is that is going on and you can recognize, uh, then, then you can find a way, and I'll show you that in a minute, um, you can find a way to heal or resolve whatever that, that reaction is. So <clears throat> enough of the information about it. Uh, why don't you go do this with me? So just uh, sit in a posture that's comfortable, upright, alert, uh, your head on your, on your neck and aligned with your shoulders, your pelvis kind of aligned with your uh, torso. If you can, your feet on the floor or however you're sitting, sit comfortably. And begin by focusing your attention on your breath. Again, feel the air going in and out through your nose. <clears throat> feel the movements of your body. So this is a very important part of it because it's a shift from thinking to a direct experience of sensing. the sensations of your body as you breathe. That's all it really is. And in your meditation practice, which I hope this encourages and helps sustain and strengthen, you'll find that if you give it some time, the thinking mind starts to get quieter and starts to go more in the background and your direct experience, your sensory experience, the experience of your feelings become more prominent. So in this moment, you recognize that you, you have a body, you know your body is, is here, and you can ask yourself where, just for a moment, where am I in relationship to this body? Am I above my head? Am I behind it? Am I to the right, to the left, in front of it? Where am I? When I think of my body, where am I looking? 
that sense of self, you can have a choice to bring wherever you want to in your body. So bring it now into this region of your abdomen and pelvic area, that sphere that I showed you in the diagram. Bring it there so that you feel some sense of this place. Now I know it's a, it can be challenging in the beginning to, to get this, but even if you get a, like just a little feeling of when you breathe, that you feel that part of your body, that's really good. That's the beginning of, of being able to enter into it. Because any of the things that we're working on in the world, any of the things that we're concerned about in the world, the things that we find disturbing, the things that we think we want to make happen. There's a feeling down here about that. And sometimes it's painful. And sometimes it's good. It feels good. It feels open, relaxed. And with an attitude of non-judgment, non just being open to whatever you feel, you begin to relax this area of your body a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Don't aim for 100% relaxation. It's not going to happen right away, not if you really bring your awareness in here. No need to judge yourself at all. You might find lower back, this ties into your lower back, your sacrum, your, um, your belly. It's the region from below the pelvics to right about the area of your solar plexus. That's what we're talking about. Okay. And as you breathe, you can think of deep, deep, deep inside this sphere a light, the light of your beingness. You may want to just imagine it if it seems hard to get it any other way as a little flame a little light that gradually grows, gradually grows, and expands throughout this region, throughout all of the muscles, bones, tissue, blood vessels. Just let it fill this space with that, that clearing light, that healing light. Relax your legs, relax your feet. If you feel you're drifting off, just come back. Just come back. Every time. Okay, and now we'll let that be. And bring your, your sense of yourself, the one that you are, in this moment, where you feel you're coming from, bring it up in your body, through the solar plexus area, and into the heart chamber, the cave of the heart. It may help you to think of that tree we talked about last time, a tree in the, that runs vertically through your whole body, the central axis. It helps you to find that central place that balances you left and right and front and back. Now the heart chamber, just like we often say in common language, oh, I feel this in my heart. It's, it's true, it's literal. Your heart area, not just the organ, 
that whole part of your body resonates to all the emotions that are going on in your life right now. And when you think of this situation or that situation or this person or that person, your heart, it's as if there's a, a, a musical string that, that rings a note in there. And again, deep, deep, deep in the center of this space, there's a light that you can imagine, think of, open to. And that begins to spread and fill this area of your heart, uh, helping relieve or release whatever tensions, whatever tightness, whatever threads. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be 100%. It could even be just a little teeny bit, a little tingle. Appreciate what you are experiencing as your experience in this moment. Feel how the, the heart sphere sits atop the cauldron the pelvic abdominal sphere. Whatever it is we want for this world, whatever it is that we are sad and lamenting about that's happening in the world, your heart resonates to that in this very literal, energetic way. And it's okay. And it's also okay that you can choose to bring healing attention to it. And so this will, this will continue, this kind of clearing. Once you set it in motion, it'll continue. And bring your attention now, your, your self-sense, up from the heart chamber up through your chest, up through the neck, and into the head. And it, it just experience as if you had like one of those space helmets on. Not a rigid kind of thing, but energetically, a, a sphere of consciousness that includes your head, includes your brain. It's not limited to the brain. And just open to how perhaps in some ways your head has taken on some of the tumult, confusion, the muddiness, the cloudiness of the world. And open deep, deep, deep inside to the very center of this place. Imagine that there's a, or, or open to that there is actually a, a light, an energy of, of clear mind. In the Buddhist tradition, they talk about Buddha mind. But whatever you imagine to be, or rather than imagine even open to, clarity, as if like when there are clouds and a, a nice breeze comes or a fog and, and starts to clear the air, clears the air in a room. Your own inner air purifier of your mind. And your mind then is capable of being not uh, a source of conflicting and negative thoughts, but rather a receptive vehicle for the consciousness of the being, the true being that you are, the loving, compassionate, kind, clear, free being that is your true self. Your mind itself can be a vehicle for that, just as your heart, just as your lower body. 
I set that as an intention for myself. And it's a work in progress. As I remember that intention, my attention goes to that and I begin to experience it. Feel it, sense it, allow it to be. So, I'm trying to get the timing on these uh, sessions well, uh, well under control, and I don't talk too much. Um, I want to give you uh, 10 minutes now to be in a, a small group, probably about four people. And I want to just emphasize that it, if at all you feel like you don't want to talk, that's fine. Hang in there, just let people know, or uh, it's okay to be silent. And then at the end of the break, we'll come back uh, for uh, some conclusions. So, so hang in there with, with us all. Okay, so Brent, you want to push the button? The breakout break room button? <laughs> 